Hi everyone, I'm Alex from Sanzu Fabrications and in this series I'm going to show you how I'm putting together my Marth and Ike costumes from the Super Smash Brothers series. The first portion that I'm going to build is Marth's breastplate. The first step was creating a pattern for the armor. I did this by covering my mannequin in plastic wrap and then in masking tape. I carefully drew out the shape of the armor, revisiting my reference pictures often to make sure I had the size and shape of the armor correct. I also added the neck guard from other iterations of Marth in order to make the armor more visually interesting. Once I was satisfied with the rough draft, I carefully cut it off the mannequin. I flattened this out and added darts in the pattern where needed. Since I wanted my armor to be symmetrical, I only made a pattern for one half. This way, I could cut out one half of the armor, flip the pattern over, and make a second mirrored half. To make my patterns more durable, I trace these onto a sturdy poster board. For this project, I decided to experiment with EVA foam. I've used thermoplastics on a couple projects in the past, but for wearable pieces of armor, I wanted to use something flexible. I pinned the pieces of my new pattern to the EVA foam and trace them out with a permanent marker. I then used a very sharp X-Acto blade to cut out the shapes. If you're curious about any of the tools or materials I'm using for this project, I'll provide links for them in the description of this video. I used a heat gun to warm the foam and bend the curve into each piece. I then beveled the back of the darts to add more shape. I do not recommend this. The beveled darts just made it more difficult to properly glue everything and didn't add anything to the shape of the armor either. I added a beveled edge to the bottom of the neck guard and the top of the armor so the neck guard would flare out. I applied barged contact cement to the darts and the seams. I let this dry for 5 minutes before firmly attaching all of the pieces. The beveled edges of the darts produced some terrible puckering, but I was able to minimize it after some sanding with 100 grit sandpaper. I then took the pieces outside to dremel and bevel the edges where the neck guard would attach. I also took the time to soften the hard corners all around the armor. When using a dremel on EVA foam, please make sure you're wearing a respirator and safety goggles to protect yourself from the inevitable cloud of debris. With everything sanded, I carefully cleaned off any excess dust and glued the neck guard into place. I then trimmed off any excess material with my X-Acto blade. I cut four strips of polypropylene and marked their placement on the inside of the armor. I cut a crosshatch pattern into the foam and applied heat to open the cuts and provide more surface area for the contact cement to grip. Using a scrap of foam, I applied contact cement to the inside of the armor and the straps. After a few minutes, I glued the straps directly to the armor. I cemented a large scrap of craft foam onto the inside of the armor for a cleaner finish. This also helps secure the straps. I probably won't do this on future pieces because it used up a large amount of time and material. I cut off the extra craft foam, went over the edges again with my Dremel, and used my heat gun to heat seal everything. I used my original pattern to make the trim out of craft foam. I made the trim half an inch smaller than the armor and went in another half inch for its width. Using contact cement, I very carefully attached it to the armor. I then used that 100 grit sandpaper to smooth out the edges of the craft foam. Before working on this armor, I had to cast some gems with resin. I added some red acrylic paint for color and glitter for depth and brilliance. After a few days they cured so I was able to trace the shape to make the setting for the gem. I cut the setting out of a scrap of EVA foam and added a half inch border to it with craft foam. I again used 100 grit sandpaper and a little dremeling to smooth the edges. There's nothing too interesting about a new piece of armor, so I marked out some battle damage with the pen and traced over the lines with my wood burner to add some cuts into it. I masked off the center of the gem setting and the straps and covered the entire piece with three coats of Plasti Dip to add a flexible and durable prime coat for the paint. After allowing several hours to dry, I removed the masking tape and carefully cemented the gem into the setting. And voila! That's it! Now I have a nice sturdy breastplate ready to be painted. Unfortunately, that's going to have to wait until I finish all of the other armor pieces. 
If you guys have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment. I will see you next time. I need to get back to work.